for easy pass records, you know, the records of toll booth uh, transactions every time you draw through a drive through a uh, a toll booth transponder at a bridge or a, or a highway in those parts of the country like ours that that have them. Um, your location is tracked and logged, and of course that's the way they bill you at the end of the month for how many, you know. But that data, you know, then gets used to say, oh, you say you're going to be a good father to your children, but, you know, how is it that you never seem to go through the exit on your way home until 9 o'clock at night and so on, you know. So, so this, is, this is standard stuff in, in family law cases now, and, it's, and, and, and the more tracking data that is retained, even though we use it for all kinds of enjoyable purposes, the more the potential is for it to be used for other purposes as well. We're talking to a uh, Harvard computer professor, uh, Harry Lewis. He's the former dean at Harvard College. His book is called Blown to Bits, Your Life, Liberty, and Happiness After the Digital Explosion. Don't worry. We'll be back with him. Stay with us. Costello watching the detectives. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. Harry Lewis is our guest, former dean at Harvard College, professor of computer science at Harvard, and co-author of Blown to Bits. I'm afraid he's talking about your privacy. Blown to Bits, Your Life, Liberty, and Happiness After the Digital Explosion. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. Okay, uh, Professor Lewis, um, talking about, let's see, going into the drugstore, and they say, oh, can I have your discount card after you uh, buy your little private products? Yes. This, this, is, this of course, technology is, is, is not very new, but we don't think about it very much. Um, this is what's known in the business as a privacy tax. That is to say, they advertise it as a discount card, where your loyalty card, where by showing your allegiance to your store, they are granting you a small discount. But, the, of course, the price, the, the real price is the lower price, and it's only if you refuse to surrender your identity and your uh, history of marketing, uh, your purchase history, that you pay the higher price, because this data is extremely valuable to them. And, you know, they're, they're willing, as it were, to pay you a little bit or to tax you a little bit if you don't surrender it. Uh, because of the, uh, the the analysis, but of course, every time you do that, every time you are willing to uh, ask for a fifty cent discount uh, in exchange for your uh, identity, you're also telling them, you know, what kind of laxatives you use, or if it's how much wine you're buying, or uh, and and again, do we really know where that data goes? I'm sure in the fine print somewhere on the long form or the little I agree box that you click, which no one ever, ever, ever reads what it says in those, those I agree boxes, and sometimes it's fairly shocking what's in there when you stop and, and, and think about it. Um, you don't know who that data is being shared with unless you are very, very careful about I, it. I'd like to ask you about uh, cable system providers. Obviously, the, it, with the infamous triple play now, more and more of all everything that we do is going through one line of either right. a, a Comcast or a Time Warner uh, and, uh, or a uh, or a Verizon. Now, uh, right. what are the responsibilities and the you limitations? TV, uh, TV, internet, TV, and fo phone. phone, and internet. Everything that you're doing, basically from right. your house now. Right. Uh, and um, what are the responsibilities or the limitations of the people who own the pipes uh, in terms of what they can do with the data that, process, that passes through those pipes? Right. Well, it's, it, the triple play thing is interesting because, as you see, as you correctly point out, it's only one pipe, and now it's only bits that are going through them. We call them 
telephone conversations and internet communications and cable communications. But they're really just all just bits. They've just kind of, you know, virtually in cyberspace, split them up into three separate uh, imaginary pipes. And this is an old issue, actually, in, uh, you know, in America. It's very, very important for the American democracy that um, communications companies just, you know, allow people to ship the bits over, the information over as they want and not get involved in the business of monitoring or controlling or trying to shape what it is that people are communicating over the over the pipes. This is, there, there are precedents of this back in the days of the telegraph, where the Western Union made an unholy alliance with a particular one of the wire services, which wound up limiting what kinds of information would 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 flow there. So, um, so this is in the internet space. Let's just restricting ourselves there. This is what's uh, called the net neutrality debate, and I'm a, a very strong net neutrality advocate and was a little disturbed to discover yesterday that of all places in the in the stimulus bill the negotiations yesterday there were there were discussions uh, about um, uh, encouraging the internet service providers to do content filtering to try to filter out uh, illegal content or things that might be illegal content uh, uh, on the basis of copyright or pornography laws or, 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 or other things. And, you know, this is really, given how much of, uh, how many ideas and expressions and thoughts now flow through those fiber optic cables into our houses this way, this is exactly as though we were saying that because some illegal stuff gets delivered by postal mail, that we want the Postal Service to open all of the mail being delivered to everybody but, and but, see what's in it before But when you it say that in. there are the, these historic protections, my question is, because so much of the data uh, is saved, uh, yes. in other words, there is still, uh, the companies may not be peering into it, but they are storing it. Uh, in their system somewhere, is that true? Well, they're not, they, they, they're, they're, we, we hope they're not saving all of your email forever, um, but it, it depends on the architecture of the system and exactly where the stru structure is. I don't think our internet service providers are necessarily saving all of our emails all the time. But Why not? It, but uh, but they but they but they certainly could. And in the United Kingdom, there's plans right now to expand so that at least the source and destination of every email not only gets saved but saved in a centralized uh, government database so for terrorist tracking and and so on. And certainly, um, you know, if you think that when you've deleted an email, I've moved over here to talking about email. That you know, when you've deleted an email, that it's really gone. That is certainly. A, uh, a, a, a misjudgment, uh, you know, if you use a, a service provider like Gmail, you know, it stays at Google for a while after it gets deleted. A couple of quick questions. I was just flying to Atlanta and Washington last weekend. Yes. I get to the airport and I'm going on the line. They said, you clear? So I said, right. clear? They right. said, I said, I don't right. know what you mean. They said, then go on the other line. What right. is this clear system? So this is a, this is the, uh, this is another one of these price discount things. You know, you pay a little, uh, you pay some extra, and at certain airports, many airports, you now get to go to the short line instead of in the long line, where uh, you can get through more efficiently, which will create a wonderful point of attack for terrorists, because they now know which line is easy to get through, and they just have to figure out how to break through the identity checking system that exists at airport what security. What is virus scan? It, it's got a, I think, I think there, it's an iris scan and fingerprint scan both or something like that. But I, but, but that's assuming that the databases are accurate and all kinds of other things. So Google, I, Google has vast amounts of information about yes. everything. I, I, uh, the issue of who finds out first about where there's a flu outbreak. Yeah, so, so this is, but you know, in a way this is quite a wonderful story, but, but, it, but it's a very, it's another like the Tanya Ryder story. It's rather, it's, it's, it's puzzling from a social standpoint. So, so Google now is the first place in the United States that knows 
when and where a flu epidemic is breaking out. And they know that because people are Googling flu symptoms. They will say headache, runny nose, flu, you know, and hoping to get some, some medical information. And long before the Center for Disease Control, about two weeks before the Center for Disease Control, knows about flu outbreaks because people are actually walking into hospitals and the physician records the diagnosis and then eventually reports it to Atlanta where the CDC is, you know, Google can see it coming. So, so this is quite wonderful. But then you say, well, why do we have the Center for Disease, there all of those people in the government doing this? What does it mean that a private company now, uh, you know, which has done these wonderful things because it's so totally unregulated, which is, you know, all to, to the good, you know, knows more about us than, uh, than, uh, than, the, than our government does. That's a little odd, isn't it? I mean, there was a big controversy when telecoms gave over information to the government, gave them a way to monitor. Right. What and about the, Google giving well, over Google, all this information? And, and look, Google, I, I'm and a big defender of Google. I love Google. Google's a fabulous company. And, and it, I've got an endorsement on my book from one of Google's top technical people. It, it is an absolute engineer marvel of uh, um, unprecedented... We've got 15 seconds. Uh, okay, but... But, <laughs> but they know everything.